Welcome back to the John Gets Games playthrough for Mini Golf Designer. At this point, we have played through a couple of rounds in the game in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description, or you can click the I up there in the top corner. Now, before we go back into the game, I would like to again ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as we play through the rest of this game, and that lets me put corrections on the screen, which will make this as accurate a playthrough as possible. All right, let's jump back into the game. At this point, we are picking the game back up in the middle of a round. As you can see, we have already taken a tile, so now the green player can choose one of these three, or of course, they could pass. Well, they've decided they would like to take this tile right over here. It has two people on it, so it helps their popularity out by two, and they could put it down in a wide variety of ways, but it appears this is what they want to do. So that is going to extend out their hole number one, but it does not increase the par value of that hole at all. All right, the blue player can go, and they have decided to pick up this piece here. They could have grabbed this one, which has two dogs on it, but dogs don't actually add any satisfaction in this game. That only happens when a specific client is in the game. So in this case, they're going to go with this piece instead. Uh, this one is not necessarily bad, of course. They could put it somewhere like that in order to help fill out their plot, but they think this is a fine tile as well. Now, they've decided to go like this to wrap their first hole around, and that does not increase the par. It's already three tiles long, but it has a par value of one. Of course, the blue player has to put their token right over here, and that has finished out this round. So we can reset things for the next round. And now it's the blue player's turn. Well, they are pretty happy with this. Uh, they think that putting green is just about perfect for them. It has two of the tubes on it and it is also a par three. So they can put that right over there, and that adds three par to their first hole, and that gets them exactly to par four, which is the average that every hole is looking for, and this also gives two more satisfaction because of the Mr. Lucky Four client win. Next up, the green player can go, and they have decided to take this tile here. Uh, they contemplated going to the bench or taking this to make sure they could go first in the next round, but they figure they like this tile enough to chance us potentially squeaking in before them. Now, they have decided to add this right over here, so that does not actually uh, add on to their current hole. It looks like they're uh, already planning for the next one out. Well, it is time for us to go, and if we decided to head over to this spot and take this tile, we could add that down right over here, which would increase our par by one, which is okay, and then that would give us first dibs at this set over here. Now we could grab this, which would be a uh, one, two, three par if we finished off our second hole, which is not the four par that we're looking for. Now one thing we always need to pay attention to is how popular our park is. We made a promise that we would have the most fun uh, golf course, and in order to fulfill that, we need lots of people. So I think instead, let's actually go last in the next round. I don't think we desperately need any of these tiles. I think we'd be okay with any of them. Now this lets us take this tile, which has two people on it, so that increases our popularity. Uh, currently, we had four, and the green player had... It looks like five, so they are very popular right now. The blue player has three, and we have to make sure to stay in the running with popularity. Now, we have to make sure we don't place this the wrong way around. If we did this, then that would be the wrong direction because the T would run right into this trap. So we can make the ramp go like this, and now that has added one to our overall par for the second hole. So we can put a cube right over there, and that finished out our turn as well as the round. So we can do a reset. Oh, that's interesting. Three of these tiles don't have any of the hole pieces on them, and two of them have three people on them. So I think we want to make sure we pick up one of these two right here. All right, the green player can go, and they are quite happy to go first because they really were wanting this tile. Now that's going to increase their popularity by one, and then they are going to finish off their first hole. So you can add that right over there, and that increased the par by one, so that is a par five. Now that is still within the green sweet spot area, so that will give them plus two satisfaction at the end of the game, but of course they will not get two satisfaction for having a par four, because that is a par five. This also means this is one above the average, so at some point they want to shoot to have a par three hole in order to make up for the difference. Next up, the blue player can go, and they have decided to pick up this piece here. That's just an angle that does not add any to the par amount, and they are going to put it like that into their area, 
they are looks like planning on putting something over here to connect up. Uh, by going early on in the round, they will get first pick, and it's likely they're hoping to place this one right over there, which would add to their overall circuit. Now, of course, we could just pass, but we are not going to do that. I think let's go ahead and certainly pick up one of these two. Now, they both have two uh, people on them, and this one has a par 3, and this one has a par 1. Now, I think we actually want to go with lower par than high at this moment, so that means we are going to get third pick in the next round again. But I think we will get access to one of these two because the blue player uh, certainly looks like they are angling to pick up this tile. Either way, we can now add this into our design. And I think let's add it right over there. That increases the par of our second hole by one, which brings us up to three. And we will hopefully be able to finish this off with a one par putting green. If we look at our overall plot, you can see we are going to have to do five tiles below our starting house. And we have one, two, three, four. So we only want to do one more below. And again, hopefully that will be a putting green. Uh, we don't have to do that soon. We could, of course, work out over here on other holes before we are able to pick that up. We'll just have to see what tiles come out of the bag. All right, that finished the round, and I just realized we forgot to throw this back into the bag at the start of that round. Uh, now we can reset for the next round. And this time, I will remember to discard this top tile. All right, the blue player can go, and they are indeed wanting to take this tile. So they're going to head right over here, and that is going to start off their second hole. So they can put their two right over here, and remember, you can change the ordering of these holes at any point if you want to. Now currently, their hole number two has a par of one, so they can put this down right over there, and that is uh, next to the end of their first hole, so that is looking to be plus two satisfaction for continuing that circuit. After the blue player has gone, the green player gets to go. And they've decided they are going to pick up one of these picnics. It seems significantly better than this tile right now. And they are just going to put it right here in the middle of their park with the first hole kind of wrapping around it. After that, we can go and we are absolutely going to take this. It seems like the green player is gunning really hard for popularity, uh, just like we are. Uh, it's possible that they are also uh, hoping to have the most popular uh, design. I hope that's not the case overall, but we certainly need to try and stay competitive with the overall number of people in our design. So we have to add this into our plot somewhere. And if we wanted to, we could shove it way up here and then just plan on having the ninth hole go onto this spot. But I do like having some variety to work on that. It's also worth noting we could work out that way and uh, go from 9, 8, 7, 6, and then work on the 1, 2, 3 over here and meet up somewhere in the middle. We definitely don't have to grow out all in order like we have been doing so far. Uh, now I think maybe let's just slide this one in right over there. I think that is a fine spot for it. All right, that's finished out our turn, which means the round is over. So we can reset and bring out four more tiles. And look at that, there are two more tiles with three people on them. So uh, these are things that we probably have to continue trying to go after in order to stay as popular as possible. Uh, either way, we can put this back into the bag, and now the blue player gets to go. In this case, they want to go for this bend that has one pipe on it, as well as one person, and it adds one to the par of this hole. So it looks like it's a very loopy hole at this point, and they can put the par right over there. Now it's time for the green player to go, and they consider taking this. They can tell that we would like to have it, but they think this is probably a better one for them. Actually, that might not be the case. Uh, they were considering taking this one to add it right over there, but that would get the par up to four already for this hole, which means no matter what, it would overshoot the average that they're looking for. So unfortunately for us, it looks like the green player is going to grab this. Uh, so that means we are either going to have to pass if we don't want to keep going in last place or just take one of these two. Now the green player is going to add this one right over here. And overall, we are pretty bummed about that. This would have been ideal to finish off our second hole, especially considering it has a couple of popularity. Right now, the green player has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people in their design. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven as well. So we're tied. Well, at least things are close overall. And no matter what tile we take, we are actually going to gain two popularity. So we, I think, should take one of these two. Neither of them have pipes, so we don't have to worry about that consideration. 
So the main difference between these two is this one is a T and this one uh, goes into the middle of a hole. So I figure starting off another T is probably a good thing. Now we have to add this into our design. And when we consider the fact that we want to put a putting green right over here, I think I am tempted to place the T like this or like that. Remember, you can go on a diagonal. And if we look at our plot, we are going to need to go three spaces over to the left uh, before we hit this stream. Now, I suppose that there will be a bridge that we're working over, so this can be a much longer line. So the question is, do we want to head in this direction for this hole or maybe try to circle back up here? Uh, now, this could be good, or it could also put us in a jam where we really need an angle. But I think this is probably going to be better for being compact. So yeah, let's place this over here. And for the moment, we will say that this is our third hole, and that currently has a par of two. All right, the round is done. And once again, we are going to go last in the next round, which I am not liking the trend of. It seems like we have gone last many times in the last few rounds. Well, the blue player now gets to go, and they have decided they actually don't mind going later on in the turn order, and they want to grab one of these tiles that has a picnic with three people on it. Now, they have to put this out somewhere in their uh, design, and they'll put it down over here. Next up, the green player can go, and they really don't like the idea of this tile for their current situation. They could, of course, put it somewhere else to work on a different uh, hole, but they've decided they are just going to take this, and we certainly don't like to see just how popular the green player's design is becoming. Uh, now, it is worth noting that this one right here has a single person on it, but it does also have a bench and a little pool. There are clients that give extra satisfaction for the benches as well as the pools. We just don't have them in this game, which makes tiles like this less enticing in this given setup. So the green player has to add this somewhere, and they're just going to extend out this non-mini-golf playing spot in their design. All right, we can go, and the good news is we get to go first in the next round, but the bad news is I don't think we necessarily love either of these tiles. I suppose this one isn't terrible. We could place it right over there, and that increases our popularity by one, but it does force us into stopping over here or putting in an angle. Now, there is an angle over here which we could grab in the next round that would increase our par by one and also would put us in a good position to take uh, whatever ends up showing up on the next strip. But if we are taking that, then we are not becoming more popular and every other tile showing up in the next round has two people on it. Because of that, part of me feels like maybe we should take this tile in order to angle towards taking this one, the place over there which has two people on it instead of one. These both have one person on it, so they're functionally the same in that way. But then, of course, the concern is that we are plugging up our mini golf course with non-putting tiles. But I still think that's probably going to be worth it, especially considering that means that there is one less tile over here that our opponents could take that have the people on it. Of course, all three of us might take these, but in that case, we would stay equal with our opponents. So we have to place this down somewhere in our design. And at this point, I am starting to feel tempted to just throw this way up here and worry about trying to work the ninth hole into this spot later on in the game. I think this area is getting pretty congested, and when you think about the fact that we are going to have essentially a 5x3 um, a column here and then a stream, I don't want to put this in over here, which could make it really hard to establish our circuit. And I suppose one thing we could do is we could put this right over there. That would be this spot, and the stream essentially runs to here and over. So then with our um, uh, holes, we could try to go up and then down and then sneak across that bridge, although that might be a little bit restrictive. But then again, we probably don't want to head over here and then back down. That wouldn't really make a good circuit. So I think I've talked myself into it. We'll put the person in a waiting pool right over here. All right, that finished up the round. So we can now discard this, and for the first time in a while, we get first dibs. Uh, now, before I actually take our turn, I do want to point out uh, that on these tiles that show up, we have a nice cheat sheet over here which tells us exactly how much terrain is on each type. For instance, this one over here looks like it has three pipes on it, and we can see over here that it does indeed have three pipes, and it also has one flower bed. So this can be good just to double check the points that you get for the art, although so far it's seemed to be pretty self-explanatory to me. So we can take our turn, and as I explained at length on our last turn, I think this is the tile that we want to grab. 
So we can put it right over here, and we are looking to get an angle piece to get out of this jam, or of course we would love to get a two-par putting green if one of those shows up. Next up, the blue player can go, and they've decided just to take this nice little patch of grass with a couple of people on it. Uh, they're going to put it right down over here next to this picnic in their area. This now means the green player can go, and they don't like the idea of picking up this tile. It has three par on it already, so that means if this is added into a hole, then the minimum that hole could be is five par. And of course, we are all aiming for four par in this game in particular because of this client. So they've decided because of that, they're going to pick up this one. Uh, now, this one does not have any popularity, and this one does have two people on it, but they still think this is the tile they want to grab. Next up, they have to add this down into the design, and they don't love this positioning. They could, of course, have passed and not taken this tile, but they decided it did make sense for them to grab it, and they're going to put it right over here and maybe try to build off of that for their third or fourth hole, something like that. All right, that round is done. And it looks like the green player gets to go. Now, they've decided to grab this straight piece right here with a couple of people on it. It looks like uh, one of them is a kid that's maybe fallen down, and they're going to add it right over here. If we look at the green player's plot, they only have a uh, three-high area that they're working for. So because they put these picnics over here, they are looking for quite a few straight pieces to get around this area. Next up, the blue player can go, and they're going to head right to the front to pick up this tile here. Uh, now, they want to put it over there, so it appears they are already thinking about uh, maybe their ninth hole and trying to work back over there. This does have three pipes on it, which is worth six satisfaction at the end of the game, which is pretty darn good. Well, it's now time for us to go, and we can either pass to go first, or we can take one of these two tiles. Now, they are actually relatively similar. You'll notice they are both angles. Uh, they both have two people on them, and they are both two par. Now, the main difference, as far as we are concerned, is the fact that this one has a single pipe going around it, and this other one has two pipes. You'll notice the holes go down and then through. So I think let's grab this one because it's worth uh, two more satisfaction at the end of the game than the other one. Now, we talked about putting an angle piece right over here, and that would fit pretty well, except, actually, no, that doesn't work at all. That would be going in the wrong direction because, as you can see, you have to go into this part and then fall down. So that means if we want to play here, we do need to use this one because this one can go either direction. Now, we could, of course, just take this and place it somewhere else for a different uh, path, but I do think we want to put an angle piece here. So yeah, I've talked myself out of it. We will put this one right over here. Now, that has added two to the par for our third hole, and that is a little unfortunate because that means no matter what, we are going to overshoot uh, having a par of four, but if we were able to end this with a par one putting green, that would still keep us in the green zone. So let's put our token right over here, and now we can move into the next round. Okay, the blue player can go, uh, but before they take their turn, I just want to point out that two uh, par one putting greens just showed up, so uh, we really want to pick up one of these. This one in particular because it has two people, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. It is currently the blue player's turn. After considering their options, they would like to pick up this putting green because that is going to fit really nicely over here to finish up their second hole. That adds one popularity and two par, so when they add that two par, you'll notice it looks like both of their holes so far are completed with a par four. Next up, the green player can go, and they want to grab this straight piece, and they'll put it right over here. This means it's now time for us to go, and I think we are pretty safe taking this tile. It looks very likely that the green player is aiming to pick up this tile because that would give them a par four on their second hole, and they don't currently desperately need a putting green. These are pretty good, but uh, even if the green player took one of these, we could pick up the other one. So I think let's try to find a good spot to add this T into our design. Now, I think we need to start with some assumptions. Uh, we have to assume we're going to put a putting green over here as well as right over here at some point. Now, with that in mind, I feel motivated to add this maybe down over here. Because in that instance, there is a putting green right here, there is a stream going right over here, and then there's going to be a bridge that we want to make over there. 
So that means this could be our fourth hole, and we could try to either stop it soon or work our way around. And that way, this would be hypothetically adjacent to a putting green that I'm making an assumption about uh, adding onto that spot. So yeah, I think this is a good location. That means we likely won't be doing anything here for the game. So in the future, if we find another tile like these, we could put them right over there and not worry about extending out our holes. So yeah, we could go ahead and put the hole 4 marker down on that tee. And it looks like it starts out with a par of 2. Alright, that round is done. Well, it looks like we have drawn the first client visit tile out of the bag. Now, as I said in the tutorial, whenever you draw one of these, you immediately replace it with another tile from the bag. So in that case, it'll be this one right here. And now before we move on, each player can simultaneously add more promises to their promise stack when the client thematically comes over to visit them while they're working on their design. So while our opponents are thinking about this, we can look at our options. And since we started the game with one promise, that means there are six other promises that we can make if we think it is a good idea. Now, these are associated with seven out of the eight attributes. So essentially, we can promise that uh, we will get the most points for these uh, tiles that we take and put face down because we finished first. Uh, we can also promise to try and match the whims of Mr. Client uh, better than anyone else. Now, that means we would need par four holes, and we know that the blue player already has two of them locked in. So I feel like this might not be the best thing to go after. The next one is her whim, and this has to do with having the most pipes and tunnels in our area. Now that is a maybe, I think, and then there is the land promise. Now this goes to uh, the player who gets the most points for the land scoring, which is again going to be this number, minus one for each missing tile in our plot, and minus three for every tile outside the limits of the plot. So far, we're doing pretty good on this, so we could consider this one if we wanted to. Uh, next up is the circuit. Uh, now, so far, everything is connected up into a circuit, but that is essentially the case for all of us, so I'm not sure if this one is a good idea. And lastly, this one gives points if you are closest to average uh, in uh, not taking penalty points for placing black cubes out into your par sheet or having excess cubes not used. Uh, so far, again, the blue player seems to be doing a little bit better on that, and it is worth noting that when the client comes by, we don't have to promise anything. Uh, this is entirely optional. At the start of the game, we had to promise at least once, but now we could choose not to do any of these. Now, let's take a quick look at our pipe count. Currently, we have one, two, three, and oh wow, just three. I thought we maybe had more. Uh, so if you look over to our opponents, the green player has four of them, and the blue player currently has... Uh, wow, six. So I think at this point, uh, if we're going to promise anything, it will be the land promise. But honestly, I feel like maybe we should just uh, play a little bit more cautiously and not make any promises when the clients come by. Uh, this is going to go back into the bag, and it's very possible we will see it again before the end of the game, when perhaps we have a better idea of uh, being better at one of these attributes than one of our opponents. At the same time we were thinking about this, so were our opponents. Now it looks like the green player decided they were going to make one more promise when the clients came by, and then the blue player made two promises when the clients came by, so they are up to three. After that, we can toss this back into the bag. Remember, in a three-player game, there are four of these total in the bag. Well, let's come back to the middle of the table where we have to complete the setup for the next round. All right, the green player can go, and just like we suspected, they do want to take this T card. When they add it into their design, it works very well for them. They can make that their second hole, and you'll see that it is now finished with a par of four. So they can add all of these down immediately, and they are still slightly above average, with their hole one being par five, but they can work on that later on in the game. This means it's now time for us to go, and both of these are great for us. Obviously, this one is better because it has one more person, but not so obviously, this one isn't potentially as good because if we take it, then odds are very strong that the blue player goes over here, and then we get the last pick in this round versus getting the second pick in this round. Now, looking at what the green player wants, I think it's pretty likely they're hoping to grab this T tile right here, and then if the blue player went before us and they went between these two options, they would potentially take this. Now, this does not have any people on it, but it is a par one putting green, which we know that we want. 
So I think maybe let's forego the uh, extra popularity by taking this so that we have a higher likelihood of picking up this tile right here. So let's add this down into our design and that fits perfectly in the bottom right corner of our plot. Uh, as you can see, that adds one to our overall par, and all four tiles have one par, so that means for our second hole, we have par four, which is exactly what we are looking for. So uh, this is looking pretty well. That's kind of a cool hole, really. It goes into a ramp with a uh, chicane overall into the end, so uh, it's a pretty popular one, too, considering how many people are currently on that hole. Uh, either way, that's finished up our turn. So now the blue player can go, and they could take this tile or go to the bench, but they think that this is a pretty good one for them to take, and it looks like they don't actually care too much about going last place, so maybe this was an overly cautious idea for us, but either way, this is the way it's going to go. Well, the blue player has to add this somewhere, and they'll put it up here, where they are planning on having that be the putting green for their ninth hole. Okay, that finished up the round, so now we can reset for the next one. So the green player gets to go first, and they are going to pick up this tea tile. In this case, they want to put it right over here, and that is going to be their third hole, and that is going to continue out their circuit because it is orthogonally adjacent to the putting green of their second hole. So currently that has a par of one, and with their turn, now we can go. Now I talked about this on our last turn, that uh, one of the reasons we went here instead of there is so that we could pick up this tile, so I think let's go ahead and do it. We can then add this into our design right there, so that's going to finish out our third hole, and that does add one to its par. So unfortunately, it is a five par hole. We would of course love to have this stop at four par, but it's not realistic to hit four on every single one of our nine holes. Uh, all right, that's finished up our turn. This means it is now the blue player's turn, and for the first time in the game, it looks like somebody is going to be passing. Uh, now this does mean that they are maybe going to be a little bit slower at filling out their design because they're not taking a tile this turn, but they are hoping that uh, other players pass as the game gets a little bit farther on, and they would really like to go first in the following round. So they're not going to take any tiles, which means this round is over. And now it's time for the blue player to go. Well, obviously they wanted to go first, and they really wanted this one par T tile. They're going to add that right over here, and they're going to say that this is their ninth hole. So we can see that has a par of four, which is, of course, the thing that we are all aiming for. Uh, so far, they have completed three holes, and all three of them are par four. All right, now that blue is done, we can go. And I don't think we want this par three putting green. Uh, we could put it down right over here, but that would get us to par 5 within these two tiles, which is again not the end of the world, but our overall average is definitely drifting a little bit high, which I don't like. Now instead, I think let's just take this tile that has three people on it that are playing archery, which is maybe not the safest thing overall, but we can add them right over here so that at least when they are doing that archery, they will be shooting towards the stream that is moving along in this direction. This means it is the green player's turn, and they are very happy, actually, to have access to this tile right here. As we can see, that fits nicely into their top right corner of their overall plot, and that added three to their hole that was par one. So now that is par four, which is, of course, what everyone is hoping to do. Okay, that round is over. So the blue player can now go, and they are going to pick up this putting green. With it, they are going to keep working backwards, so this is likely going to be the putting green for their eighth hole. After that, the green player can go, and they are going to take this tile. And with it, they are going to elongate what is very likely to be their fourth hole. As you can see, that adds a third par, which they don't love, but it does have one person and one pipe on it. Uh, they figured this spot was uh, essentially going to need to all go towards this fourth hole anyway, so they may as well make it a little bit longer, even though they don't like adding to the par. All right, we are next, and the only real difference between these tiles for us is this has two people and this has one. Now, getting more people is nice, but we already have, it looks like, three tiles in our design that don't have any holes in them, and if we look over here and see this tile, well, this one is kind of perfect for us as we are trying to build out our fourth hole. 
Now, if we went over here, the blue player would go first, and I think there is a pretty real possibility that they would grab this one on that action. Now, I think it's very unlikely that the green player would, so if we're not sure about the blue player, we could go after this, but I think this might be a good time to pass. Well, this round is done, so we can now reset for the next one. And now it's time for us to go because we passed over here on the bench. Now, as we discussed before, we would really like this tile. That's the main reason we passed. So let's go ahead and take it. And then let's place it right down over here. That is going to add one to the par for our fourth hole. And you'll notice that this is perfectly oriented to be in line with the bridge that's at the bottom of our plot. All right, the blue player can go now, and they have decided to pick up this angled piece. Now they're going to put that right over here, and I just realized that the blue player accidentally put their par cubes down for their ninth hole on the third hole spot. So technically, these should all be right down over here. Sorry about that. After that, the green player can go, and they are going to pick up this putting green that has a little dog on it looking into the hole. Now they're going to put that right over here, so that will be the end of what will most likely be their fourth hole, and that has finished up this round. So let's reset for the next round. After that, the green player can go, and they are going to pick up this T-spot with two people on it. Now, they could add that right over here to start off their fourth hole, but that would put that up to a par six, and they really would like to stay in the sweet spot over here because, again, if your par is three, four, or five, you get plus two satisfaction. So instead, they are going to place this over here to start working on their fifth hole. Now, they can put this right down on top of it, and they've decided to have it start by pointing straight up. After that, they can add two par cubes down onto the fifth hole spot of their score sheet. Next up, the blue player can go, and they like the idea of having a bend piece. The fact that it has a person on it for popularity is also good. When they come back over here, they're going to add it down onto what will likely be their eighth hole. And if you look to their plot, you can see there is this lake that they are avoiding, and that starts right over here. So they are going to be needing to stay up in this area before they drop back down around the side. This means it's now our turn, and this is fine. I don't think we want to take this one with a couple of dogs, because again, dogs don't actually add satisfaction in this play. Uh, but this one does have a person with a dog, I suppose. Uh, so we can grab this one and use that to extend out our fourth hole. As you can see, that is going to become the bridge that will go over the stream. Okay, that finished out the round, so we can now bring out four more tiles. And now it looks like we get to go first. Well, out of these four options, I like these three, uh, but in particular, this one looks pretty darn good. Now, it does have two people on it, which is great. In fact, this one has two people as well, and this one has a uh, par rating of three. Now, three is pretty high, so I think let's use this tile to start working on our ninth hole. So let's add that one over here so that it is adjacent to our starting shack here because that will give us plus two satisfaction as a circuit bonus. Now we could do it like this, this, or we could spin it around if we want to. And we of course have to consider how this plot will guide our other tiles around the design. Now, one other thing to consider is the fact that this has a par three on it. So ideally, we would like to just add one more par to this, which means uh, hypothetically, this could just be a two tile hole overall. So I think let's just leave it right over here and hope to get a one par T tile and put that right onto this spot at some point later on in the game. Next up, the blue player can go and they would like to pick up this tile that has one person on it and three of these little water traps, but water traps don't actually mean anything in this game. Uh, now that is going to add two par to whichever hole they add this to. And they've decided to place this right down over here where they are hoping it will be the middle part of the third hole in their design. After that, the green player can go and they've decided they really would like to add more pieces to holes instead of these non-hole tiles. So they're actually going to pass and not pick up either one of these. That means this round is over, so we can slide this over and then draw out four more tiles. Next up, we can discard these and then the green player can start this round. Now they've decided they would like to pick up this angle piece that has two people on it. And they're going to add that right over here. Next up, the blue player is going to go, and they are simply going to take this tile with three people on it. 
then they're going to add it right over here because as you can see that spot is next to where their lake starts so they were probably not going to try and cram any more holes up there so they figure they have a couple of spots to put non-hole tiles in this means we can go and I am regretting putting this tile down like that. If we had oriented it like this or like that, then we could have taken this tile and then worked off of that. Instead, if we put this right over here, then that is going to be a mismatch and not even a complete hole. So that seems like a bad idea. Now we could take this one and add it down over there. It does not increase our overall par for that hole. It just uses up a spot that we maybe want to use for other holes. But I think this is probably still the best thing for us to do. Uh, I'm not sure if I actually want any of these either, but let's go ahead and move on to the spot and take that anyway. All right, the round is over, so we can pull out four more tiles. Wow, it looks like we have three putting greens that showed up there in the round after this one. Uh, either way, it's now time for us to go, and we can pick one of these four. Well, one thing that jumps out to me is the fact that both of these have a single pipe on them, and they both have one person. Uh, now, this one does not have a defined direction, and this one does, and this one has a lower par value. So I think let's take this tile here. Now, when we go to add this into our design, we have to think towards the future a bit. I don't think we want to put it right down here because that would put this up to a par 5 without even having its putting grain. So instead, we can look over and see that we are effectively going to be putting a 3x3 three three, uh, design area in over here. And then we are going to want to poke out the top for another bridge to head over here into the later parts of our design. Now, I think what we probably want to do is this, because then we can hopefully put a putting green over here, and then we could uh, maybe angle this one over like that, or maybe we just don't get a circuit bonus when we try to connect this stuff up. I do think adding this in is good. It has a person, and it has a two-satisfaction pipe on it, so I want to make use of this, and currently I think this is the best option that we have. Actually, there is another possibility up here. Uh, we know that we are hoping to end the ninth hole on this spot or maybe over there. So if we put this like that, then we know that we have a space to put a tile here and here. So then potentially this could be our eighth hole. And then we try to finish the ninth hole here to try and work our way back. You know, I think that might actually be better than trying to make it work in the bottom left area. All right, we'll go with that. Next up, the green player can go and they're going to take this tile here that has a dog and a flower bed on it. Then they're going to add that into their design, extending out their fifth hole. Next up, the blue player can go, and they are tempted by this tile, but they don't like how hard the par is for it, so they're going to go with this one instead that just has a person reading on a picnic blanket. Now they have to add this into the design, and they'll do it right over here onto a spot that is also adjacent to the lake in the middle of their plot. Well, that's finished out the round, so we can now do some resetting. And then after that, the green player can go, and they're going to take this putting green tile with a single person on it. After that, they can put it right over here, and that will increase the par for their fifth hole by two, so that brings it up to the ideal par of four. After that, blue can go, and they are going to take this putting green tile, and they are going to add it up here onto what will likely be their seventh hole. Next up, we have a hard decision to make. Uh, now we could grab this one here and add that onto this hole, but that would bring us up to a par six, which would jump us out of the green zone and into the red zone. So we would effectively lose two satisfaction points versus if this was a par five. Now we do have to build out our design. We can't wait for the perfect tiles always. Uh, and another option for us is we could pass. If we did that, then we would get first pick at these options. And this uh, seemingly uh, not very interesting tile is a one par T tile, which would fit perfectly right here to make a par four hole nine, which is something that we are looking for. So if we don't pass and we go over here, I think it is a virtual certainty that this will be taken by the green player because uh, this would work really well for them right here in their design. You know what? I think let's pass. I like the idea of taking this tile a little bit more than cramming one of these in. And while this is nice with its three people on it to make our design more popular, currently our design is significantly more popular than either of our opponents because we've been going so hard on those people. So I think we are going to go with this. All right, it's time to reset. And now we can go. 
well, we are certainly going to take this because that's the whole reason that we passed. And I do want to point out right over here, this is three people playing a game of mini golf designer, which I think is pretty cute. All right, let's slide this in right over here and then make that our ninth hole, which does indeed have the ideal par of four. After that, the green player can go, and they were indeed really wanting to take that, and in fact, they don't really want to take any of these other tiles, so they are going to pass. This means it's now the blue player's turn, and they are going to go with this tile right over here. That's going to get added onto this location, and that'll finish up their turn. So let's bring out four more tiles. Well, the green player can go, and they are absolutely taking this T-tile. They're going to add that down right over here and make that their fourth hole, and that has a par of one, two, three, four, five. All right, we are next, and I don't think we want to take either of these two tiles. Let's grab this one, and I think I have a pretty good spot in mind for it. As you can see, it does have two of these tunnel pipes, so this comes in with four bonus satisfaction because of Mrs. Plummer, and of course it also has a person on it. Well, when we look back to our design, we could once again consider that we want to make a 3x3 three three area over here uh, with that river kind of cutting it off. With that in mind, I think let's put this over here because that can be one of the corners of the 3x3, three three, and we'll try to work that into a good uh, hole over here, which will likely be our fifth hole. Okay, the blue player can go, and they really don't think they should add either of these tiles into their area. They don't want to fill too many of their spots in with non-hole tiles because they still have quite a few holes to build. So they are going to pass, and that is going to finish this round. Well, the blue player can now go, and they honestly don't like the look of a lot of these tiles that we're seeing. So they are going to go ahead and take this tile over here. It does have three people on it, and every person is worth a satisfaction point at the end of the game. Now, they did consider taking this tile, but they were having a hard time seeing a good place to put it that would not blow their par rating for that hole way beyond what they want to see. And they're not in a great spot to start off a new hole. So this is the one they're going to go with. And they are just going to keep wrapping around their lake with these non-hole tiles. Next up, the green player can go. And they are going to take this tile. And with it, they are going to go right over here where it looks like they're hoping that will be the middle piece within a sixth hole. Uh, now that does have a par rating of three, so that is going to be a hard thing for them to manage to try and get their average par rating down, but I suppose every one above average that you are at the end of the game only loses you one satisfaction, and this tile alone has plus one satisfaction for the person, and then two more because it does have a tunnel pipe on it. Well, it is once again our turn, and I think we want to pass. I don't think we want to put either of these two tiles down, and while I'm honestly not crazy about any of these tiles either, I still think this is probably the right call for us. So we can slide these up and bring out four more tiles. All right, we now get to go. And when we look towards the round after this one, I can tell that we would really like to pick up this tile, but I'm not sure we really have a chance to pick it up. This is one that everybody is probably going to want, and if we went early in the order or passed, well, both of our opponents could pass after us, which means they would get to go first. Uh, it would be a shame, I think, to pass and then just have everybody pass, especially considering this does have a pipe on it over here, so I think let's just keep getting tiles down. Remember, the sooner you finish your design, the more points you get while your opponents finish theirs. Now we do have to add this into our design, and I don't love our options. I suppose we could do something like this and hope that we can do some snaking back and forth. Fortunately, neither of these are directional. Uh, or another thing we could do is just place this down over here to have a really long fourth hole. Now, I don't love that overall because we would be definitely falling out of the uh, sweet spot of being uh, between three and five par. So I guess, yeah, maybe we'll just see if we can make this work up here. Next up, the green player can go, and they are going to take this tile. Then they are going to add it right over here into their design. And then the blue player is going to pass. So that means we can slide this over and then draw out four more tiles. All right, the blue player gets to pick first, and they have decided to grab this T tile. Then they are going to put it right over here into this spot, 
and they are going to make this their third hole. Now the third hole currently has a par of three. And now we get to choose something, and even though this has a higher par than I'd like, I think we should probably take this putting green. So let's focus in on our design, where it appears we are in the middle of working on four of our holes. Now we could put it down here to finish out the fourth hole. That would bring it to a par of five, which is okay. That's still just barely in the sweet spot. Uh, we could also put this over here to help our uh, eighth hole. Now I think this is probably a better idea because that gives us the option of placing tiles into these locations as we try to fill out this part of our plot. So yeah, we will stick with this and we can add two par to our fourth hole, which means it is going to be a par five, just like the third hole. So it looks like in general, our par is getting a little bit more above average than I'd like, but I still think this was the right call for us on this turn. Next up, the green player can go and they are going to pass. So that is going to finish up the round. All right, green can go and they are going to take this T tile. And it's going to go down right over here, which will be the start of their sixth hole. Currently, that has a par of four. Next up, blue can go, and they want this putting green. With it, they are going to finish up their third hole, and that brings it up to a par of four which means at this point they have four completed holes, all of which are par four. So they are doing a very good job at playing towards Mr. Lucky Four, and it would not surprise me if one of these is a promise to match Mr. Lucky Four's whim. Next up, we can pick one of these, and I'm honestly not that interested in this straight piece right now. Uh, we could take this one, I suppose, to try and stay with a quick overall design, or we could pass in order to have first dibs on these. Now, realistically, I think we would be happy with any of these three tiles. So I think maybe let's just go last in the next round and take this in order to not fall too far behind as we build out our design. Well, we have to put this somewhere, and I am tempted to put it down over there. Now, we know that we are making a 3x3 three three, uh, arrangement, and then we are going to go straight up to join back in over here. And currently, we have plans for our 5th hole and our, uh, looks like, 8th and 7th holes. So that means we have to fit a 6th hole in here and, of course, finish all three of these out. And I think for these three spots right over here, we might just reserve these for non-hole tiles because it's likely we're going to pick up a couple more of those, and that way they won't necessarily be in the way. Uh, also, that means we could put a T-tile right here where it will be adjacent to this putting green, so that will extend out our circuit bonus. All right, we can now reset for the next round. Next up, the blue player can choose one of these tiles, and they've decided to pick up this par 2 T-tile. Now, they are going to add it down over here. They don't want to do this because that would make this a par 3, and they are hoping to find a 3-par T-tile to put over here at some point in the game. Now, that is likely going to be their 8th hole, which means this will be the 7th hole. So they are going to put that right over here, and that is yet another hole completed that is exactly 4-par. So they are doing a very good job of sticking to that ideal par number for the game. Next up, the green player can go, and they are going to take this putting green. And that's going to go right over here. So that adds one to the par for their sixth hole. And once again, they are at par five instead of par four. So they are three above the average at this point in the game. They've also potentially put themselves into a bit of a problem with this tile here, trying to work around and uh, maintain those circuit bonuses. It is now looking likely that they won't get at least one of those circuit bonuses. All right, we can go, and I think we certainly want to take this T-tile. It does have two people on it, which is also nice. When we come back to our design, we have three different holes that could use a T-tile. Uh, this would fit well down over there, I suppose. And of course, it would fit well up here as well. Uh, now, I guess it's worth noting that if we held off on this, it's possible that we might want to put a T-tile here and connect that. Now, we would not get a circuit bonus for that, but not placing this here would leave us a little bit more flexible. So I think instead, let's send this up over here, and I do think we want to have a T-tile here so that we can then have a putting green there to continue out a circuit. Um, the river that we are avoiding does indeed go all the way up through here and then over, so this is a good spot, I think, for the T. Now that looks to be our eighth hole, so we can add that here, 
and it currently has a par of three. All right, let's move on to the next round. All right, the green player can go, and they are just going to take this tile here with one person on it. It appears they are prioritizing finishing their design quickly, and they are going to slide that in over here. Next up, the blue player decides that they want to pass, and now we get to go. Now, if we passed, we would actually go before the blue player, and that would mean we would have a first shot at picking up this tea tile. Now, that would be a pretty good thing for us. Uh, it is worth noting that both of these have a pipe on it, but they are also par 3, and I don't think we want to add something with a par that high onto one of our holes at this point. So I think let's just pass. That means three tiles weren't taken. We can slide this up, and I just realized that you are supposed to discard all of these tiles back into the bag before you redraw up. Sorry, I've been doing that in the wrong order for all of the game up to this point. Well, we get first pick, and let's certainly take this T tile. When we come back to our design, we could once again add it over here, but I think this is another situation where we are less flexible up here than we are down there. So let's add this onto that spot, and it looks like we are going to have a uh, series of uh, straight holes that are just going to lead back into each other. Now this is going to be our seventh hole, so we can add that there, and it currently has a par of three. Next up, the blue player can go, and they are going to take this tile instead of that one. This does have two people on it, but they would prefer to go sooner rather than later in the following round. So they can add this into their design, and they will go right over there. Next up, the green player can go, and they are going to take this tile here. Then they're going to add it over there into their design. All right, let's move on to the next round. Well, the blue player can go, and they are going to take this putting green, and they will place it over here in the top right corner of their plot. Next up, we can go, and I think we also want to take a putting green. And let's put this one over here to finish out our ninth hole. That is actually great, because that's adding one more par, so this brings it up to a par four on that eighth hole. After that, the green player can go, and they want to take this one here, and they are going to add that right over there. So that finished out the round, and that means we can pull four more out of the bag. And now the green player can go. Well, they are going to pick up this two-par putting green, and they are going to add this right over here. Uh, now that means they are not going to get a circuit bonus coming from their sixth hole into the seventh one. Uh, this might be their seventh hole, or it's more likely going to be their ninth hole, it looks like, potentially considering that is adjacent to this house. Now, their situation is getting a little bit crammed, and the circuit is falling apart a little bit, but it seems like they're focusing on getting this done as quickly as possible. Next up, the blue player can go, and they want to take this piece here. With that, they are going to add on to this long straight hole that they are putting on the right-hand side of their design. Next up, we get to go, and we could take a zero-point tile or a three-point tile, or of course we could pass. Now, if we took this, then it looks like we would not be picking up either of these tiles. But um, I think I'd be okay with taking up this one. It's possible that one of our opponents would not take a putting green, and I do like the idea of getting some extra popularity. Uh, we are definitely winning that contest right now, but every single person is worth one satisfaction point. So let's go ahead and go with this. When we come back to our design, let's just put it right over here and continue on with the plan of putting a T right over here. All right, that finished up the round. Well, it looks like, wow, <laughs> uh, three T's and then also a client. So we, of course, draw another tile for that client, and uh, that one is not a T. And let's go ahead and sort these first. And now each player can simultaneously decide if they want to promise anything new when the clients come around for a visit. So let's look at our design, and we still have these six options, because remember, the last time we had a client visit, we did not promise anything new. Now, one thing that I think we should consider is making a land promise. Now, this has to do with sticking to our land constraint, and we are going to get 20 satisfaction before we potentially lose anything. Now, the green player is going to be getting 19 before they lose anything, and the blue player is going to be getting 20. 
And what this means is, as long as we don't suffer any land penalties, no matter what, we will tie for the best. And when you tie, that is good enough for these promises. Uh, now, in order to not get any penalties, we have to make sure that we have no holes in our plot and that we do not go outside the bounds of our plot. Now, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about that, so maybe this is something we should go for. Now, with regards to our pipe uh, count, it appears we have one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven. Now, when we glance over to our opponent's designs, it appears they each just have six pipes. So we are actually in lead on this. So that is something to consider. And then we could, of course, try to prioritize getting some more pipes to continue that lead. Um, now, we I don't think want to go with the uh, par promise or with the uh, Mr. Uh, Lucky Four's promise because our pars are not really matching that close to four. Now, as far as time is concerned, it looks like the green player is a little bit faster than us, so this is probably not a great idea. And as far as the circuit is concerned, we are actually in a pretty good spot. Uh, we're doing a very good job with that, but as the game gets closer to the end, it might be harder to make this happen, especially if we want to make other promises. So we have to consider which one of these promises is most important to us, and I think probably these two are, so let's not worry about this one. Uh, perhaps we'll make all three of these at the end of the game, but let's not push our luck too far, and let's make both of these promises. When we look out here, it appears the blue player wants to make a fourth promise, so they can add that right under their score sheet, and the green player is going to stick with the two promises that they have. After that, we can throw this client visit tile back into the bag. Well, the blue player can now take their turn, and they are going to take this putting green. Then they are going to add it down into their design over here, so it appears they are gunning to have a two-piece hole happen on this spot. Next up, green has decided they would like to take the other putting green, and they are going to add that over here, so they appear to be wanting to put a T on that spot, which is not too surprising. Well, we are last to go, and I think this is a pretty good tile for us to grab because we know that as part of our plot, we are going to want to put tiles on this column right here. So it appears the seventh hole is going to end on this spot, so we'd like the uh, sixth hole to end over here, hypothetically, to get the best circuit scoring. Uh, now that means we could put this here, and the sixth hole would have to be pretty long in order to match up to the end of the fifth hole down here, but I still think this is a pretty good plan for us. Okay, we can move on to the next round. And now we get to go. Well, I think we want a low par T, especially one that has uh, two people on it instead of one. So let's grab this tile here. We can add that down here to this spot. We kept not doing it before, and I think it's finally time. So that looks to be our fifth hole. So we can put that over there, and it currently has a par of three. Next up, the blue player is going to take this par two T and they're going to put that down right over there. Now that looks to be their fourth hole, and it once again has a par of four. So they are continuing a very long streak of maintaining that ideal par four with their holes. Next up, the green player can go, and they are going to take this tea tile. They're going to put that down over here, and they've decided to make that their ninth hole. So it looks like their ninth and sixth holes are pretty close to each other on their map. Now, the ninth hole has a par of four, which they do like seeing. And it appears they are going to probably make this their eighth and then have a seventh hole down here. Now, you don't have a penalty for a long distance between holes. You just get a bonus if you have them next to each other. So they figure, considering they weren't able to make this happen, they are not worried about having a big gap between the sixth hole and the seventh hole, which is probably going to be down here somewhere. All right, let's move on. And now blue can go, and they are quite happy to take this tile right here. With this, they can finish off their sixth hole, and I can't believe it, but once again, they have an exact par of four. So they can slide that down onto their board. All right, we are next, and I am tempted to take this putting green, but it has a par of three, which is a lot more than I want to see at this point. So I think instead, let's just take this tile here. It does have two people on it, which works out pretty well for us, I think. When we come back to our design, I think we'll just put it right over there to finish off that set of three things in the bottom left corner that I was already planning on not putting whole tiles down onto. Next up, green can go, and they are going to take this high par putting green. 
with it. They're going to add into this spot right over there. And now we can move on to the next round. So blue can go, and they are going to take this tile. And with it, they are going to be starting off their fifth hole. So that currently has a par of one. Next up, green can go, and they are going to take this tile. And with it, they are going to finish off their eighth hole. So they can add this over here, and that is a par three. So that is still within the green zone, which they like, and it will help bring down their average a little bit, although they still are a couple above an average of four. Well, it's time for us to go, and I don't like either of these tiles, but I also don't really want to not take one of them. Uh, although I suppose if we passed, then we would have a shot at one of these two putting greens. Uh, now, realistically, at this point, we want to see uh, one par putting greens and not two par, but we also don't want to be too choosy as the game is coming close to the end. Uh, we could just take this and not worry about it, and I think that is probably what we should do. Yeah, let's just take this tile here. Unfortunately, this is going to push our par up quite a bit, but I think we're just going to have to roll with it. We can put that down right over here, and that's finished out our turn. All right, we can now reset for the next round. So the green player can go, and they have decided they're just going to take this tile right here. It looks like that is a dog trying to eat some people's food, and they're going to put it down onto that spot in their design. Next up, blue is going to take this tile here, and they're going to add it right over here, so it looks like they are pretty well positioned to complete a full circuit with their holes. They just have to get a straight piece right in over here, and of course they are hoping to find a par 1 piece to put in that spot. Next up, we can go, and while this does have a higher uh, par on it than I want, I think let's go ahead and take it. With this, we can finish off our fifth hole, and it will have a par of five, which, you know, isn't ideal, but at least it's still in the green zone. So we can add two more tokens to that hole. All right, let's move on. Green can go, and they're going to take this tile. And they're going to put it right over here, which is going to finish out their seventh hole. That one looks to have a par of four, so they can take two of their cubes and slide them down. And they have now used all of their cubes, so they do have to take two of these black cubes, each of which will be worth negative one satisfaction point at the end of the game. With that, they have finished out their uh, holes, but they do have one spot left within their plot. Next up, we can go, and I think we should certainly take this T. With it, I think let's start off our final hole, which is the sixth hole. It currently has a par of one, and as you can see, we are hoping to get a straight piece over here and then a putting green. And we only have three spots left within our overall plot. Unfortunately, two of them are uh, things that we really want putting greens for, so hopefully it does not take a long time to get those. Next up, the blue player can go, and they want to pass, so that is going to finish this round. That means we can slide all of this up. And then blue can go, and they want to grab this tile. They love the look of this one because it perfectly fits right over here, and once again, they have a par of four, that being their fifth hole. After that, the green player goes, and they are going to take this tile. And with that, they have finished out their plot. Now this means on their next turn, when they take a tile, they're going to put it face down in front of them, and that will trigger the end of the game, but uh, we'll talk about that more once that happens. Uh, at this point, we now can take our turn, and unfortunately for us, we don't really like either of these. So I think let's just pass. That means the round is over, so we can get rid of these and pull out four more tiles. And now it's time for us to go. Now, we are in a bind. Unfortunately, I don't like any of these tiles or any of these tiles either. Uh, now, uh, we want a straight piece or we want putting greens, and I don't see any of those coming up soon. So I think, uh, even though it's going to give points to the green player for us being slow, let's just pass again. Uh, after that, the blue player can take their turn, and they are really happy to take this tile right here. The reason for that is because they can slide it right over here, and once again, they have a hole that has a par of four. So it appears that they were able to do that for every single one of their holes in this game. Now, they do still have three missing spots in their overall area. 
Next up, the green player can go, and they are going to take this tile and flip it over. Remember, they do this because their plot is done, and this is going to be worth three points to them at the end of the game. Now, after they have done this, for the rest of the game, any other player can choose to do the same, and they will no longer work on their design. Of course, if anyone bows out before they finish their overall plot, then that player will suffer uh, penalties uh, even more so if you made a land promise. Either way, this is going to be worth three points to the green player because it is a flipped over tile. With that, the round is over, so we can slide this up and then discard these. Well, at this point, I'm afraid to say it, but I think we have to pass again. Uh, we need a straight piece or putting greens, and fortunately, we can pick up a putting green in the next round. Uh, after that, the green player is going to take this, and they are going to flip that over into a three-point piece. They could tell the blue player would love to have this, and the blue player not being able to get access to this is a problem. Now, they could take one of these, but they've already finished all nine of their holes, so this would be an incomplete tenth hole, and you suffer negative ten satisfaction points for every hole in addition to nine that you have. So the blue player realistically is going to either pass here or they are going to uh, take a tile to flip it over to end the game for them. Now they think they still want to keep going, so they are going to pass. That's going to put them right in front of us, which means that round is over. All right, the blue player can go first, and they are going to take this tile, and they're going to fit it right over there. Next up, we can go, and we certainly want the lower par value putting green tile. That works out well for us because that makes this hole number seven a par of four. So we can add one more par cube down over there. And now the green player once again takes a tile for three points. At this point, they've already done that three times, so this is nine extra points for them at the end of the game. Well, that's finished out the round, so we can slide this up. And now the blue player can go. Now, they have two holes in their overall plot, and they certainly could stop, but considering they are passing, that definitely telegraphs to us that one of their four promises is probably a land promise, and they really want to finish that out and to not break that promise and lose a bunch of points. So uh, after that, we can go, and uh, yeah, we definitely want to take this. We need a straight piece, and that's going to work out pretty well for us especially considering this has a person on it and no extra par. So the par for our sixth hole is currently at four, and if we're able to get a uh, one par putting green, uh, which is actually already up on the boards, then that will make this par five and still give us some bonus points. So I think we're in a pretty good spot now. Well, it's the green player's turn once again, and they are going to take this tile for three bonus points at the end of the game. After that, we can move on. And now the blue player can go, and they are very happy to take a tile that does not have golf course pieces on it. Well, they've decided to put this right over here. Next up, we are going to gladly take this tile, which is going to finish off our plot. As you can see, our sixth hole has a par of five, so unfortunately we have to pull four of these tokens out of the supply, and every one of these is worth negative one satisfaction point. Next up, the green player can go, and they are going to flip this over. With that, we are done with the round, so this is going to go away, and we can pull out four more tiles. And now the green player can go. Well, they are going to just pick this tile here, and then the blue player can go, and they are bummed because they would have loved to take this with a couple of people to add to their popularity. Um, either way, they are going to take this with a couple of dogs, which does not actually help them out and they can use this to finish out their plot. After that, we can go, and we have decided that we are done with our design. Now, we could have decided this turns ago and just had gaps in our design, but we made a land promise that we did not want to break. So uh, let's just take this. That will flip over into three points for us at the end of the game. And now, uh, for the final time, we can refresh. So we are, of course, going to pull four more tiles out of the bag. And now all three of us are going to draw these to flip them over. Uh, we can take this one here. The blue player is done with their plot, so they're going to take one. Once again, they could have stopped a few turns ago and just suffered some land penalties, but they decided not to do that. For the last time, the green player can take one of these and flip it over. And at this point, every single player has taken a tile to flip it over, which means the game has officially come to an end. 
This means it's now time to start evaluating each one of our designs. Now we can start with the uh, popularity attribute. So we are each going to get one satisfaction point per person in our design. When we look over to our design, we have 52 people in it, which means we can take 52 points, which brings us around this track and back to the two spot. And we can take one of these 50 point tokens. Next up, the green player has 38 people, which gets them 38 satisfaction points. And lastly, the blue player has 37 people. So they will go up to 37, and this means that we did the best. The green player came in second, and the blue player came in third for when we check the promises near the end of final scoring. Next up, we can score for the speed in which we finished our designs. Each one of our face-down tiles will be worth three satisfaction points. Well, we grabbed two of these, so that means we get six points, which brings us up to 58. The green player has seven of these, so that is seven times three, or 21 more points. Now, they were at 38, so that gets them up to 59. Lastly, the blue player has just one, so they are going to get three points, bringing them to 40. This means the green player was the fastest, we were second fastest, and blue was the slowest player. Next up, we can check the whims of Mrs. Client. Now, she is going to give two satisfaction points per pipe or tunnel within our designs. When we focus on our area, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total. So we will get 14 satisfaction, which brings us up to 22. Next up, the green player has one, two, three, four, five, six total on their area. So that is 12 satisfaction points which will bring them up to 71. Uh, we have 72 points, not 22 points. Uh, next up, the blue player can check theirs. And they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they also get 14 points. This means they will go up to 54. That will give them a 50 point token. And the green player should also have a 50 point token. Uh, this also means that the blue player tied with us for first place and the green player comes in third place for that one. Moving on, we can check the whims of Mr. Client, who is going to give two points per hole that has a par value of four. When we focus over here, it looks like we have five of those, so that is 10 satisfaction points, which will bring us up to 82. Next up, the green player has one, two, three, four, five, so they also get 10 points, which will bring them up to 81. Lastly, the pesky blue player has a par four on all nine of their holes. So that is going to be 9 times 2, or 18 satisfaction points. This is going to bring them from 54 up to 72. This also means blue is in first, and then we tie with the green player for second. Moving on, we can score for the par. Now we are going to get 2 uh, satisfaction points for every hole that is within the green zone, and we will lose 1 satisfaction for each black cube or unused cube that we have. Well, all nine of ours are in the green zone, so that is 18 points, but then we subtract four from that to give us 14 total satisfaction. This means we are going to go up to 96, and then it looks like the green player also has all of theirs in the green zone, so that is 18 points minus two, so they get 16 points here. That means they're going to jump up to 97. Lastly, the blue player is going to get 9 times 2, or 18 points, with no penalties, so they're going to score just like they did for the client. That's going to bring them up to 90 points, and the blue player is in first, the green player came in second, and we came in third. Now we can check over here and see how the land scoring went. Now this is going to give us uh, satisfaction equal to the number on our card, and then we will lose one satisfaction for each missing tile, and three satisfaction for each tile outside of our card's plot. In this case, it looks like none of us are going to suffer any penalties. We all exactly matched our plots. Of course, that's one of the reasons why the green player has so many points from these tiles over here, because they finished early. Now this means we will get 20 points, the green player will get 19 because they did have a slightly smaller plot, and then the blue player will get 20 points. So green is going to head up to 117, and they can flip their 50-point marker over to 100. Uh, the green player is going to be in second for this, and then both of their opponents are tied for first. We are going to gain 20, which is going to bring us up to 116, and we can flip over our token. And lastly, the blue player is going to go from 90 up to 110.
Next up, we can score for the circuit. Now, this gives players two satisfaction points every time the putting green of a previous hole is orthogonally adjacent to the T tile of the next one. And this also counts for the first T being next to the building and the ninth putting green being next to the building. So we can focus over here, and we start off with our one, so that is going to be two points. Then when we follow this circuit around, we were actually able to do every single spot on this track. So it looks like we probably should have made a circuit promise, uh, but we didn't end up doing that. Now this means we are going to get two times 10 or 20 points, which will bring us up to 136. After that, the green player can score, and they almost completed their circuit. They started off really well going all the way around here, but at this point, their putting green for six is not adjacent to the T for seven. So golfers have to walk all the way over here, but then they continue to maintain that circuit. So that means they made nine out of these 10 connections, so that is going to be 18 points. This will bring them up to 135. And finally, the blue player was indeed able to do this every single time. Uh, so that means, just like us, they are going to get 20 more points. So that's going to bring them up to 130, and our scores are pretty close. Now, uh, the blue and red players tied for this one, and green came in second. Uh, now, the final thing we have to check before we go into promises is the playability of our designs. Now, we will lose 10 satisfaction for every missing or additional hole we have, even if they are incomplete. We will lose three satisfaction per hole with two putting greens or two tees. We will lose three satisfaction per mismatched connection. And finally, one satisfaction per wrong direction tile. Well, we can start by looking to our area, and we have exactly nine holes. Now, we don't have any mismatches, which happens when you have a uh, end like this pointing out towards the edge or into one of the green spots. And uh, part of the reason for that is because we let the green player pass a bunch. Uh, now, if we wanted to, we could have actually taken, I think, uh, a additional T tile at one point to stop earlier. And it's possible that we should have done that because finishing earlier might have netted us more points than that penalty would have given us. Either way, we actually don't have any playability mistakes on our area, so we are not going to lose any points. And next up, the green player also does not have any of these. They do have a direction tile over here, but they are going in the correct direction. And even though their circuit didn't match up perfectly, they don't have any mismatches and they have the exact amount of holes that they need. Lastly, the blue player is also in the same situation. They have no errors showing up. Uh, all of their directions are fine. In fact, it looks like they did not take any directional tiles and every one of their holes has a T and a putting green. Well, that means all of our designs are playable, which is certainly a good thing. Now, the final thing that we have to do is check the promises. Now, we made three promises, the green player made two, and the blue player made four. So I think we can start off here and score ours. Now, we made a fun promise, a land promise, and a her whim promise. So we can look over here to fun, and we are in first place. So in a three-player game, that is going to give us 10 satisfaction. Next up for the land promise, we are tied for first, so that's going to count, giving us 10 more points. And finally, the her whim promise is right up here, and we are once again tied for first place. So that means we made good promises, and each one is worth 10 points. So we get 30 more points, which is going to bring us from 136 up to 166, and we can take another 50-point tile. Next up, the green player only made two promises, and the first one is not too surprising. It is the fast promise. Uh, it seemed like they were trying to be fast all game long, and they are indeed first for that track. So that is going to give them 10 points. Now, unfortunately for them, they made a land promise, and in retrospect, they probably shouldn't have done this. Uh, they have a card that is worth 19 points instead of the 20 of their opponents, and they were angling on their opponents uh, stopping before they finished the entire plot. They wanted to get done so early that their opponents would have to bow out. But unfortunately for them, both of their opponents also made land promises, and you'll see that from the blue player soon. So that means the green player is coming in third place on the land area, so that's going to lose them 10 points. So this is plus 10 and minus 10, which means they don't actually get any points for these promises at all. Uh, now, the green player is pretty bummed about that, but after that, we can move on to the blue player who has four promises. Now, I mentioned before that they made a land promise, so uh, we can see that they are going to get 10 points for that. They also made a par promise, which isn't too surprising considering how well they did with par. 
Now we can look over here and they are in first, so that is 10 more points. Um, after that, there is a her whim promise and they were able to tie for first there and then the his whim promise is one that they were indeed able to do. Now, they were very close to not making the Herwim. Um, if they had had one less pipe in their area, then they would have come in second place, which would have lost them two points. But in this case, they made really good promises, and that is going to be 40 more points for them. Now, we can look down here and see that they were at 130, which means they will jump all the way up here to a final score of 170. So that's where the game ends with the blue player just barely squeaking in a victory over us and then the green player came in third place and that completes one full three player game of mini golf designer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, even though we were just barely not able to pull off a win there at the end. Uh, now, it's true, I did make a couple of mistakes that I pointed out in the playthrough. Uh, one of our holes actually had a piece that was uh, reversed, so we should have lost a satisfaction point uh, for the uh, playability uh, penalty there. And of course, the blue player miscounted uh, one of their holes. They should have had a, a par five hole, which would have ended up costing them, I think, about three points. So the blue player still would have won the game, and it was very close overall between the two of us. Uh, unfortunately for the green player, they fell pretty far behind. Uh, that was definitely exacerbated by them uh, losing, uh, coming in third place for one of their promises, uh, which was definitely a mistake. <laughs> they they certainly should not have made that promise, and um, that's you know partly because well this is the first time I'm playing the game, and so I just kind of strategically tripped up over that while I was playing it. Um, now I was trying to have the green player go very very fast. They had the smallest overall uh, plot of land, and obviously they made a promise at the beginning of the game to be done first and they maybe leaned into that a little bit too hard. Um, now, they did have 21 points at the end of the game from those tokens compared to the three points of the blue player, so uh, an 18-point difference overall, but that was still nowhere near enough to actually reach the, the difference in points that the blue player was able to get by uh, focusing in on other things. It seems like the green player was just way too focused on going fast, and if they had gone a little bit slower, they still probably could have finished off uh, that uh, promise, but they also could have had a more robust design overall to get more satisfaction points in a variety of other ways and also potentially deny good options from the rest of us. So yeah, I think at this point that is going to wrap up all of my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.